It is finally happening. DaVinci Resolve for beginners. Part 1. Actually, I don't know how many parts are going to be in this series, but this may be like the most requested video or series that I've ever had from people in my community. So my goal by the end of this is if you just downloaded DaVinci Resolve, that you will be able to at least edit and export a video at the end of this. That's the goal. So this is for beginners. Part 1. Let's just fucking get right into it, honestly. So, 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 so. Let's say you are in here on your laptop. DaVinci Resolve. Just download it. Open that bad boy up. As you can see, I'm currently on Studio 19, version 19. And now, these are all past save projects. I'm just gonna go to an untitled project, new project. Double click here. This is where it takes you. And already, I could see this as being intimidating, which it was for me when I first started. So if you look here, let's start off. The most important thing is just to save your project so you don't lose what you're doing. So you just go up to File, Save Project As, and we're just gonna call this, uh, I mean, what is this? DaVinci Resolve for be how do you spell begin? Beginners, did I spell that right? Part one, <laughs> we're just gonna go with it. So now, I mean, you can see that's the project name saved and then from here on out, you can just hit save project. So now let's talk about the tabs down here. I really only use four of these tabs. Right here, it, it automatically puts you in the cut tab. I don't use the cut tab. Maybe some people do, for me, I don't. I go straight to the edit tab. Here's where you're gonna spend most of your time. The fusion tab is where you do the fancy magic masks or adding, you know, like the glow for the text and whatnot. Color is where you're gonna do your color grading and then export. That's all I use, to be honest. One, two, three, four. Now, let's say you just came in you create your project, you go over to the edit tab, because again, remember it starts you in the cut tab, go to the edit tab, and now you wanna bring some media in, or some videos. So I'm going to go into my finder folder, and let me just grab some videos from this week's docu-vlog. Oh, that's a little shameless plug. Go check out my, <laughs> my docu-vlogs on my channel if you haven't yet. Here I am, you can see I just literally dragged and dropped them in. I could have just dragged and dropped here. Let me go control Z, which control Z is back at least on max so you could also drag and drop into the media pool right here change a frame rate i always hit don't change because my frame rate for my project's already set so i don't want it to match whatever that is that could be wrong also take everything i say with a grain of salt <laughs> let's just i should have started that disclaimer at the beginning but now i have all these here you could do like control a which is select all drag everything in or you could highlight it or you could just go individual clips and drag them in but Let's just go control A, let's drag everything in. So now I have everything in my timeline here. So I have all my videos in here and this is in horizontal, but let's say you were editing a reel. You go up to file, project settings, and right here is where you can change. Like this is 1080p, cause it's 1080, my timeline resolution. I'm going to switch it to 4K, which is right here and then say that I was editing a vertical video, you would hit use vertical resolution. And you can see here, it's going to change this to vertical. So this is like if you're doing reels, but if you're editing like a YouTube video, then you're just going to leave it as this 4K. And the reason I change 4K in my timeline is because whenever I render, I just have the export settings match my timeline settings. So you could technically edit with it in like 1080p, so that way it's taking up or like taking less power from your computer or less RAM or whatever that is. But I just, this is how I work. Again, take it with a grain of salt. So you got everything in your timeline, you got it set to 4K. Next thing I do is I highlight all of my audio clips and I right click on the audio and go to clip attributes. Then I go to audio and I switch this so they're both on the same channel. Now, the reason I do this is because, again, this one I may be actually really wrong on. As I don't know, at this point, you guys probably clicked off the fucking tutorial because like this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. But whenever you leave them on two separate channels, if somebody's listening to this like with their AirPods in and they only have, say, the left AirPod in, they might not be able to hear anything because it's like the separate channels are for like the separate ears. So I switch it to the same channel. So no matter what, like if you only have one AirPod in, you're going to hear the audio. So that's what I do. And same with like if you import music in here, like for uh, an audio, you're going to want to do the same thing. You're gonna to wanna to click on it, right click, clip attributes, and then switch to the same channel so that way they match. 
feel free to correct me in the comments or clarify that more. Again, a lot of things I just do because I know that's what you do. Now, since you have your clips in here, let's say, oh, I want to cut this first part of this clip and delete it. You can either grab the end of it and drag it over or back and you can see it's auto clipping to the red or to the line. That is because of this right here, the snapping. So if I turn that off, you can see it's not snapping to anything it's just going right past it so i always recommend having that on because it makes it easier to snap to it or if like you're dragging clips around you can see it's snapping to the ends just like that so that's make sure your snapping's on but yeah you can just drag the ends of it to clip it or you can use this tool right here called the blade edit mode and you can go ahead and chop it up just by clicking on it and then you can maybe select that center one and hit delete and then say you wanted everything on the right side to come over, you can ripple delete by selecting between it and hitting delete, brings it over. Uh, say you wanna layer stuff, you can be dragging it up onto extra layers so you can see like audio layer one, audio two, video layer one, video two. So here it's just obviously overlaying over the video. I think all that makes pretty good sense. I mean, you can just keep going up and up and up. Uh, so let's bring these back down. Let's show you how to insert text. So to insert text, you're gonna go to effects up here. And then you're going to go down to titles. Mine's already on titles. And you can drag in a text plus node. And then say your text plus is right here. See how small it is, it's hard to see. That's just because you're not zoomed into your timeline. So you're going to hit the plus here and it zooms into wherever your red cursor is selected. So I'm zooming in here to see my title. I can select my title and come over here into the inspector tab and I can customize it to say, uh, da Vinci can't spell Da Vinci Resolve. Um, such a bad typer. Uh, and then you can go to like your font. Let's say I want my font to be Drover. And then let's say I want my color to be pink, red, whatever. You can come over here to these different color options and say I want it to be yellow. And then you can hit OK. Or let's say I want it to be something to match in here, which this isn't color graded yet, so that wouldn't be the smartest. But you can select the eyedropper, then come up here and color match. And then you could even make slight adjustments to the color match in here with like the brightness, darkness, or the colors around it. So yeah, that's essentially titles. You can change the size of the titles. You can change the tracking of it, all sorts of stuff. I just recommend playing around with this if I were you. Um, and then say you come over to this, here's the title. Again, in the inspector, if you come to like the settings, you can change size, position, uh, on the y-axis or x-axis, rotation angle, pitch and yaw, all sorts of shit. This is again, just play around with a lot of this. But you can get a title in here. So right now, if I click on clips, you can see the audio is linked to it. If you wanna unlink it, just select the clip, hit unlink, which is this button right here. And then, sorry, there I gotta unselect it because now it resets and you can see it's unlinked. If you want to relink it, just click relink and you're back. Let's say for whatever reason you have an audio from this clip that you want to link to this clip, which they normally aren't. So you can, you know, get rid of this audio and you're like, I want these two to be linked now. So you just, you move it over, you highlight both of them, right click and hit link clips. Now, now whenever you select the link clips back on, now these two are linked. So that's, you know, whatever you may use that for, now you know how. <laughs> so really, I mean, you can make a full fucking YouTube video at this point. And then last thing is exporting. So if you come over here to the export tab, or I guess it's called the delivery tab, sorry. So this again can look intimidating, but to be honest, I changed nothing because earlier I set my um, timeline resolution to 4K and this matches my timeline resolution. So it goes to 4K. If you didn't set your timeline resolution to 4K, you could manually set it here. Same with like the vertical resolution. And then some people recommend changing QuickTime, which would be .mov to MP4, but I normally don't. I normally just leave it as what it's set at. Regardless, I don't think it makes a huge difference with either. But you would just come in here and let's say, I wanted to again call this DaVinci Resolve for Beginners Part 1. And then you go to Location, hit Browse, and this is just where your video is going to get saved to. So go to Downloads or if you save it to your hard drive, wherever. So let's just say I save it to my Downloads. You just hit Save. Now it shows where it's being saved to. So then later when I go into like my Finder window and go to Downloads, it's going to be in here. That's where I saved it to. 
So once everything's set there, you just hit add to render queue. It adds it up here to your render queue then, and you just hit render all. And it goes through and renders it, which I'm not gonna let this render out, so I'm gonna hit stop. But yeah, I mean, I think that's essentially it for part one. You can make a fucking beautiful YouTube video at this point. Uh, come back for part two. <laughs>